What's up guys, Reese here from Reese3D.com. This is the fourth part of our tutorial series on creating 3D characters in Maya. So if you haven't watched the previous ones, you can go ahead and watch them. I have added links to those videos in the description. Okay, so if you haven't watched them, it would be a little bit confusing for you to just start with this video. So please go ahead and watch them and then come back to this. So in the previous videos, we basically created a simple sketch and from the sketch, we brought that sketch inside Maya and we have started creating the basic shape of the character, which is basically the upper body and the lower body, which is just having the legs. So now from here, we're going to continue on building the details of the clothes and details in the face. OK, so if I take if you take a look here, we have just the leg here and then we have just the head. OK, now I pressed the number one and number three to either get into the smooth mode or the non smooth mode. All right, so now let's start building the uh, collar that we have for this cloth here. Okay, now before we do that, let's just check out one little problem that we have. You can see that in the front, it looks perfectly fine. That's the exact shape that we wanted. But if you look at the back, it is actually having a mirror of whatever we have in the front. Okay, so first we need to fix that. So simply what I can do is I can just pick up uh, vertex just by right clicking. And I can just select one of these vertices, select the move tool, pull it up all the way here. Now when it comes up, it actually goes a little bit inside. Let me just check that from my side view here. This one. Okay. So it's not matching up 100% with the model that we have. So I can actually do some little adjustments here just to make that fit. Now here, I'm not just selecting on this vertex. As you can see, if I select this vertex, it is basically going to make it is going to basically make, select just one vertex okay so uh, if you take a look here so if i just click on this guy all right you see it just selects one vertex but if i just click and drag you see it selects both of these vertices because they are both in the same exact place when we see it from the side view OK, so whenever you're moving like this, you need to make sure that you're selecting both of them together. So let me just pull this up. All right. And maybe we can just push this a little bit backwards. Let me check from here. All right. And we'll do the same thing for these two vertices as well. So click and drag. Now you can try to have um, the, a similar kind of look for all these guys okay so let's see maybe starting from there you can actually go all the way down here so even these ones i can just pull them down and these ones also i can pull them down and i can continue building the same shape over here now it's not a hundred percent matching up with the design that we have because if you say take a look at the front view it is not matching the way it should so let me just undo that a couple of steps okay and let's just check this out all right so i think maybe i can just slightly pull these guys down or yeah i think that's fine i can actually push these guys a little bit up i'm not following the exact uh same lines that i have in the side view just to match up with the front view as well okay but we can actually push these guys a little bit down just to create uh something that is between both of these shapes between the front view and the side view okay so again Let's bring this down. OK, so if I look at it from the perspective view, I think that looks perfectly fine. Now, at this point, you might be thinking that some of these vertices are actually popping out from the uh, other shape, uh, th that those things will be fixed when we actually smooth this entire mesh. OK, good. Now, at this point, I want to make further changes here. So what I can do is I can actually delete one side. OK, I'm going to face mode selecting all these guys and deleting them out okay so now i can make further tuning here so let me just select v 
these guys so let's select one and all the way till here okay maybe I can just make them a bit smaller uh, something wrong happened here these were not selected so let me just select them manually all right I'll use my scale tool and make it slightly smaller okay we have a little problem here I think I forgot to I did not to actually uh, connect these two guys there are actually two vertices okay so maybe these uh, vertices could have been result of the uh, mirror that we created so we can actually delete them out because this vertex is not connected to anything else so I can just get rid of that now keep in mind um, we always need to make sure that we have four-sided faces okay so let me just pull these guys down push this one a little bit inside now keep in mind I'm actually using just the vertex axis that we want to push out okay so don't use this middle one it will actually move it in different weird axes as well just to follow with the same shape that we have here I can also pull these guys a little bit up so I'll go to my edge tool and I can just select all these edges and I'll do something called um, slide edge okay so if I just press shift right click and choose slide edge tool I will be able to slide all these edges there you go so this is much better than moving your edges because when you slide it actually measures whatever other vertices that you have edges that you have and it tries to have it in the same uh, path of, or in the same flow okay so now that we have the basic shape let's start creating the collar shape here now to create the collar shape we can either extrude from the same object or we can create a totally separate object as well okay so I'm gonna basically extrude from the same object then I will actually extract that out and make it into a separate object okay so if I go ahead and select these edges so let's say one and double click on this last one so that basically selects all these edges okay I'm gonna press shift right click and I'll to choose extrude edge here okay so that will help us to pull this out so that basically creates a little extrude nice now I can do further extrude on this just to create the rest of the shape but watch what happens we have a little problem here so if I just pull this out you'll see that it becomes black right so the reason why it becomes black is because we're actually seeing the inside of the shape so here we have these shapes and we have actually the outside and if you take a closer look inside you can see that those inside areas are black and that's what we actually have here so what we can do is we can actually extract these faces I mean like take these faces out and make them into a separate object and we can actually reverse the direction okay so what I'll do is I will basically select all these faces so let's say one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten okay and I'm gonna just grow that selection to select one more level of uh, these faces so I'll press shift right click and choose um, where is it I'm sorry we have to press control right click and choose grow selection okay so click grow you can see that it just selects one more set of uh, 10 faces okay now we need to basically take this out of this object we want to make it as a separate uh, mesh okay to do that again press shift right click and you can choose something called extract faces okay this is not extrude this is extract faces so the moment I click on extract phases you can actually see that it actually splits it into two different mesh okay so if you want to do a little offset or something like that you can do that as well but we're not going to do any of those things we're going to keep them as uh, in the same place okay so now all I need to do is select this face actually I can just select this object okay and go to the phase and select all the faces okay so select all these faces because they all need to be reversed okay uh, or we can we could also do the same thing just by selecting the entire object as well okay so to reverse it we need to go up here make sure that you're in modeling and we have um, something called mesh display and there we have reverse so click on that and now it becomes the gray color that we usually see it 
that's it. So now you can see that everything looks perfectly gray and we have this as a separate object. Nice. So now what we need to do is just some final touches. So I'll go to vertex here, I'll go to my front view and I can basically adjust this to get the exact shape that we wanted. All right, so that's our collar. Now, if you think that you don't, you want to have a bit of thickness here, you can do that just by doing an, another extrude. So if I just select all these guys, I can simply do an extrude, pull this down. So that way we can basically create that same exact thickness there, okay? And finally, I can just merge these two things, two of these vertices. And that would basically, I think I selected something extra, I guess. No, that's fine. Just these two merge vertices. Okay. And you can also do the same thing here. I can select this edge here, select that edge. Actually here, I don't have to merge them because I will actually have a duplicate to the other side and that should be fine. All right, so let's just press five here. There you go. Nice. So if I just press three and let's make sure that everything looks fine, even if we smooth it. Okay, no, there's a problem here. Uh, it actually goes in here. That's because of the smooth. Okay, so let's fix that as well just by adding some extra details. Okay, so I'll press shift, right click, and I'll choose insert edge loop tool. Okay, so let's add a couple of edges here. So one all the way here in this edge and one all the way down here. And we need to have one like so as well. Okay, so now let's see what happens. I'll just select that and press three. Okay, now that looks much nicer. Good. Okay, so here it'll be a hollow because we will actually uh, make that uh, connected to the other side, which we're going to actually mirror. Okay, so that looks good. Now, one last thing that we have for the cloth is the belt. We can actually create the belt around this area and we can actually have the, um, the collar stay above that, okay? So for the belt, I'm going to create uh, using a separate object uh, instead of just extruding from here. Okay, uh, we might also fix some little issues here. Maybe when we get into texturing, that's fine. All right, so now let's just go ahead and choose um, something like uh, cube. Pull this up make it smaller, pull this to the front. That's fine, I think I'll push this a little bit up here. Good. So that's the basic uh, buckle area. So we can work on the details of the buckles later, but let's just finish up with the other shape here. And I'm going to basically select this inside uh, face. Okay, so do an extrude here. Make that smaller. Okay, we can use the uh, wireframe just to check it out. Looks good. And I'm gonna do another extrude here to pull that out as well. Okay, so I can just add a couple of more uh, details here, then we can actually add more details later. Okay, so I'm going to basically rotate that to be precise, somewhat like uh, 45 degrees. So I can do one more extrude here. This time it's going to be pushed over here. And another rotation here, push this inside. Maybe it can go slightly up, 
or we can do that later as well. Okay, so one more extrude and another rotation here. Now keep in mind guys, this is just a rough um, shape that I'm creating. We can uh, modify this later based on our need. Just do one more extrude, pull this all the way out here. All right, so now I can basically go back here and try to put them exactly in that origin. Go ahead and choose vertex here. Select these two vertices, press X to snap it to the grid. And I'll do the same thing for these two guys as well. So now what we can do is we can actually select and delete this last face there. There you go. So now I want to add a couple of more details here. So let's say shift right click and choose edge loop. Then insert one right here. And I'll have to push this a little bit out like so. Yep, that looks good. I'm going to press smooth press three for this to smooth it out and press three for this as well. And we can check how that actually looks in the final result. We need to work on that one. That's fine. So that's the belt and we need to do a little bit more work in terms of fixing these issues. Okay. So let's say I can add a couple more details here. Now for doing that, I'm going to use another tool here called as um, offset edge loop tool. Okay. So if I choose offset edge loop tool and I click on one, one of these edge loops, it will actually add two more points. Okay. So if I just release that, now I can use my move tool to select, I'll double click on that to select that. And I can actually push these guys away slightly. Now if I press three, you can see that it stays out, which is good. Now I can also do a little bit more uh, change here in terms of pushing that inside. All right, I can do that same thing here as well. Okay, so bringing, into, bringing it to its own glory. So I'll just push this a little bit inside, inside, that's fine. Okay, let's press three. There you go. If it's not matching up exactly, we can still make further changes as well. We'll have to do the same thing here. And I can actually take my offset edge loop tool, click and drag. So that's gonna add two more points. I can do some rotation here push it inside like so. That looks nice. Now, if you think that it is uh, very thin, you want to make it a bit thicker, you can also add one more edge loop right in the top. Okay. So uh, at this point, I want to actually, I should have actually made this buckle from a separate uh, object, but that's fine. It's okay. We can also do some um, edge loops here just to make this a bit uh, separate to show that it's a separate object. I can just add a couple of more divisions here. So let's say add one over there, one over here. And now we should be able to see that it's, um, yeah, that looks much better. I'll have to do the same thing on the other side, but instead what I'm going to do is I'll select all these vertices okay so bring them over here there you go and i can actually delete this phase as well that looks nice if i press three yes that looks like the belt now in terms of these buckles i can actually do one more little thing here so i'll select just these two of these guys and two of these guys as well. 
and apply a bevel, okay? Something like that. We can have two segments as well. Press three, so that looks much better. Good. I could have done the same for this bottom area as well, but that's fine. Because the bottom is not going to be visible. All right. So now one last thing that I want to do here is I want to push these guys a little bit out. Or just these bottom area a bit out. Yep. So it looks like the collar is actually in front of the belt. All right. So now we have a lot of uh, history information here. Let's get rid of those history information. To do that, I'm going to select, uh, I don't have to select actually, I can go to edit, delete all by type history. So you can see that all that history information that was there is gone. So no history information. We have a clean object here. So now I'm going to basically make a mirror to the other side. I'll go to mesh and choose mirror. I can actually do that for all these three guys. So I'll just do one, two, and three. Now for the uh, collar, you will actually have a little problem here. So let's fix that uh, by going back to mirror options. And um, we have this option here called border. Okay. So we can actually choose um, do not merge borders. Hit mirror now. So you can see that we have this as separate object. Nice. Now, one last little problem that we have is this guy. Why is it going too much up? So we want to keep that there. I think we can actually add a, another edge loop over here. I guess that can fix it. So let me give it a try. Um, I can actually, I will have to actually separate it, add that edge loop, and then I can actually uh, do the mirror. Instead, I'm going to use uh, the offset edge loop tool. Shift right click and choose offset edge loop tool. So this way we can actually have two edge loops in the same exact distance, okay? So let's try to keep it as close as possible, okay? So this saved some time. Yeah, that looks much better. Okay, so there's a bit of a gap between the head and the cloth, that is, that's fine, which is good. All right, so now we finished the body and the clothes and we can just move on to the details of the face. Okay, so let me turn that off. Yeah, that looks nice. That's our character. Okay, good. Um, you might want to keep these guys at this area a bit closer instead of just having such a steep um, Connecting area, I can actually select these faces here. So let's say three of these and pull them a bit down. Maybe I can just push that even further down. Or I can do something called a soft selection. I can just double click on this move tool and go here and we have something called soft selection. You can also press the B key in the keyboard, okay? So that will help you to just push all these guys down just like that. Okay, so turn that off and I can actually push only these guys a little bit up. So you can see that that looks much better than the way it was before. Okay, that looks much better. Um, so we see a little bit of difference here. Let me see if I can select. Uh, this actually showed up because of the uh, addition of these little uh, extra edge loops that we have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually add, um, I'm going to push these, slide these edges a little bit away. Okay, so to do that, I will actually do it on one side and I can just mirror that same thing to the other side by using the mirror tool. 
later. Okay, so I'm gonna select um, maybe till here. Okay, so I'm gonna use the slide edge tool. Okay, so slide that out. Yeah. All right. Let's check that out. Yeah, it looks much better this side. We have the same problem here. So what I'll do is I'll actually go to non-smooth mode. You can select all these faces from this one side and delete that. We will have one more set. That's fine. We can just delete that as well. Oops. <laughs> all right. So let's select that one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Keep in mind, don't make sure that you're not selecting anything else accidentally. Otherwise, you will all of a sudden find a hole somewhere. Okay. There you go. So now um, we want to make the same mirror once again. So let's go to mesh and choose mirror. There you go. So let's see how that looks now. It looks much better, except the fact that they have not combined. That's because we changed the mirror settings, remember? So let's do that once again, mirror options. Let's reset everything and choose mirror. Yep, that looks much smoother now, okay? So if you still find some little issues, you can actually do some little adjustments um, locally just to fix those. All right. Okay. So now uh, let's move on to the um, the eyes and the mouth. Okay. So um, eyes are go eyes are going to be easier. So let's just focus on the mouth first. Okay. So I'm going to actually hide these other things. Let me just um, delete all my type history now. And I'm also going to save my file because you never know when Maya is going to crash. All right. So now that we have saved our file, just to make sure that we're not going to lose any content that we have created. And now let's just um, select these clothes parts and I'm going to create a new layer for them. I'm going to call this as, uh, let's say, lower body. Okay, hit save. And I can actually hide that so that we can focus more on the top portion of the character. All right. So for the mouth, I know that the mouth is going to be uh, in this area. Okay. So roughly that length. Now for creating the mouth, we need to have at least uh, some eight different points. Okay. So uh, roughly... Um, four points in the top and four points at the bottom and maybe just a couple of them in the sides, okay? So for doing that, we need to add more details here, okay? So what I'll do is I'll actually take my insert edge loop tool and I'm gonna add a few points here. So let's say one point here, right in the middle, okay? And then I can have more points that are just crossing from the top uh, to the sides and stuff. So I can have one here Okay, and maybe a couple of points uh, that are going in the sidewise. Okay, so let's say I'll add one here. I'll add one here as well. Now, when you're adding these points, you also need to make sure that you're actually rounding off the shapes. Okay, so I'm just going to focus on just the uh, right side, sorry, left side of the character, right side for us. Okay, so once we finish with one side, we can actually mirror to the other side. Okay, so I'll just double click on this and you can see that it, it is not rounding off the shape. So what I'll do is I'll take my uh, scale tool and just scale it out a little bit like so. You can see that now it looks more rounded. Okay, so we need to do this whenever we add more details. Okay, so uh, in this case, uh, it looks fine. You feel like top is a little bit 
um, back. Okay, so I think that looks good. Much better. Okay, so now I'm actually going to delete this one side as well. So we can focus on just this area. Okay, so um, the mouth is basically going to be here. Okay, and I want to have um, one point here. So one here, one would be here, and then one all the way here. Okay, so to create the basic shape of the mouth, we're going to use the multi cut tool. So I'm going to start from here. Let's try to keep it uh, like a closed mouth. Okay, so I'll start from here. So let's say one. Okay, and then the second point is going to be somewhere here okay and the third point is going to be here and the fourth one can be here fifth one same like straight from up to down okay and then one more here and then one last here okay so this is basically the mouth area that we are going to create now once we create these shapes we know that we need to have four sided faces always in all the places right so as you can see now, if I go back to my vertex mode, you can see that we have a lot of different vertices here. So that means like this face has become like a face with like, uh, I don't know, like four, five, six, seven faces, right? So that is wrong. We don't want to have that. We want to have, we want to make sure that it is all four sided faces. Okay. So uh, first thing that I have to do is I can actually connect this guy over here. So that's fine. Okay, and this guy I can connect over here. Okay, so that again becomes like an open space, but we can just do something uh, to fix that. Now you can see that we have four sided faces here, perfect, and we have four sided faces here, uh, but this became a triangle, that's fine. We can fix that just by adding a couple of points here. So let's say add like so, hit OK, and I can actually delete this face, this edge. Okay, so delete this edge and you can see that now we have four sided faces. So the top is being fixed. So we have four, 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 and then we can continue on building the same thing here. So let's say add these two points. Good. And then add one here to here. All right. So now you can see that we have um, all that shapes to be four sided faces. That's perfect but uh, it's not enough. We have a lot of more work to do. So at this point, what I can do is I can just select and delete these two um, faces just to have the hole for the mouth, okay? And um, I can just uh, keep these things together actually. So I'll just go to vertex, select these vertices. I can use my front view here. So you can see, yep, that looks good. I can just Bring this closer here, bring this closer here, bring this closer here, bring this closer here. So make sure that you're not selecting the uh, edge that is in the back. Okay, so I think that's fine. That's That looks pretty good. Okay, so that's uh, the shape of our mouth. Looks nice. And now let's just finish up fixing all these uh, little extra face issues. Okay, so um, I can actually add one edge loop over here. So let's say go to um, select here and I can choose the insert edge loop tool and insert an edge loop right here. Okay, so you'll notice that it does not connect this line. So that's because we have um, five sided faces here. So what we can do is we can actually use the um, select in, okay, and use the multi-cut tool and we can just select from there all the way down here. Okay, hit okay here. And then we wanna do the same thing here. So let's say go here and go here. There you go. Looks nice. Okay, so now um, that looks good. So all these things are being fixed perfectly fine. Um, I think it can be over here for now. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, if I smooth this out, let's see how that looks. Uh, it's okay. It looks fine. Sometimes you might find that if you have these three faces, th these three edge loops too close to each other, 
you might find that this area becoming a bit thicker line over here. So in such cases, what you can do is you can actually push uh, these uh, edges away from each other. Okay, so uh, right here in the back, we can actually select all these. Okay, so I can use the slide edge tool and just pull this back up. Okay, and I can deselect this one and pull this a little bit up. Uh, notice I'm using actually my middle mouse button to do this. Okay, so if you use the other buttons, it won't work. So just the middle mouse button. And there you go. So deselect that as well. I think that's fine. Looking good. Okay. Looks good. I can actually move that manually also if I want to get more precise positioning there. And I'll continue doing the same thing here for these guys. So let's say push these things down, push these things down, push these things down. And there you go. Good. So now um, I can push these guys a little bit up. Down, make sure that you're not selecting anything from the back. Okay, now to add more detail to the um, mouth that we have, I can just select from here till here. Okay, so select all these edges, extrude, pull that back like so. There you go. So we have this little thickness here. And we can actually extrude more to make the entire inner shape of the mouth if you want. Or if you want, you can just leave it like that because just the inside is going to look black. Okay. So uh, if you want to create the entire backside as well, you can just pull these things down here. You can actually scale that out. Okay. So let the scale tool scale that out like so, depending on how much you want to have how much space you want to have for the inside of the mouth and do one more extrude, pull it out. Maybe one more extrude, pull it out. And this time actually we can scale this down. Okay. Push that all the way to the outside here. There you go. You can actually select these vertices, make sure that you have grid snap and you can actually snap them to that point as well. So just to make sure that we won't have any kind of overlapping when we do the mirror. And I'm gonna zoom in a little closer here. So just to select these guys, snap them, these guys, snap them, these guys, snap them. I think that's it. All right. So now, once we have all these things done, we can actually do a little bit of uh, bridge here. So let's select this one, this one, this one, this one, and choose bridge. There you go. And we can just finish up with just this little triangle, select all of them, and choose a fill hole. So that's going to fill that hole. Looks nice. All right. So if I press three, you can see that we have that mouth shape there. Okay, so once we finish the texturing, we will actually create the different uh, copies of the same head to make all the kind of different kinds of mouth movements, mouth poses that we want to have. Okay, so at this point, it's fine here. I'm going to select all that. And um, I can actually make a mirror to the other side. So let's go to mesh and choose mirror. Boom, there you go. So press three, so that's gonna smooth that out. Okay, looking good. All right, so like the way we have actually stretched these things out, we can also do the same for uh, these vertical ones. Um, I can actually select all these guys, so one, two, three, Four, five, six. Actually, all the way up here. Not that one, maybe. I can choose slide edge tool here just to slide them out.
I think that looks good. Maybe you can just slide these guys a little bit more. Okay, that's fine. And I'll do the same thing for these guys. So from there all the way till here. All right, so we want to have the same thing in the other side, so I can actually delete one side here. Uh oh. What happened? These ones are missing, huh? Well, so add them as well, and we can delete. Delete this one as well. All right, so once we're happy, we can actually do the mirror now. Okay, so now um, at this point, we can actually get a very nice uh, lips movement and stuff like that just with this much of mesh. But if you think that you want to have more details, you can actually apply a mesh smooth on this. But keep in mind, uh, when you apply mesh smooth on this, you will not be able to bring that unsmooth version. OK, and especially when you delete the history. OK, so in my case, I'm going to have I'm happy with the results. So I want to apply the mesh smooth and I want to delete the history and I don't want to get back to the non smooth version anymore. OK, so do uh do this mesh smooth just before uh, just after doing all these kind of movements and changes that you wanted to create with your mesh okay uh, and for the eyes i'm actually not going to create it in, along with the same mesh i'm going to have the eyes as a separate object so for me it's fine okay so i'll go ahead and choose uh, mesh and choose smooth here so let's go to options we'll reset everything OK, so smooth division, I want to have it as one. So not too much of smooth because I'm still going to apply uh, mesh smooth by pressing three. OK, so that looks perfectly fine. So now what I can do is I can actually delete all this history. So edit, delete all by type history so that removes the history information. So that's perfectly fine. So now if you still want to have uh, some changes to be done uh, with this mesh, we can actually use something called a soft selection. OK, so I can actually select a vertex here. Maybe I'll just click on this middle vertex or this one as well. I can use um, uh, the keyboard alphabet D or we can actually go to the uh, tool settings and we can actually turn on soft selection here as well. OK, so soft selection will help us to um, create uh, or move objects or more than one vertex with a little bit of fall off. OK, so I'm going to have the fall off to be very low. So let's say 0.5 or we can actually use the keyboard B key. OK, just to press the B key and you can actually click and drag to adjust the fall off. OK, so we can actually select this like so. Oops turn off the grid snap there so we can actually make some kind of adjustments here if you want to okay so now when you do this you will have one big problem that i wanted to point out here so let's say i want to just work on the lower part of the lips okay so i don't want the upper part of the lips lips to be affected so now you can see that it actually selects and moves the upper part as well so in the soft selection if you go to the fall off mode we have something called surface so watch what happens if i turn this to surface you can see that the top area does not get affected so now we can just control the bottom area as well okay so if that's what you want uh, you can do that okay so if i just select one vertex here i can uh, just move just all these other verses just nearby okay so if you want to have any kind of minor tweakings that you want to do here you can do this uh, at this time okay so i'm going to just turn off the uh, soft selection and we're done with the um, mouth shape so next thing that we have is the eyes okay so i'm going to actually make the eyes from a separate object instead of just extruding from this uh, cube shape 
okay so to have it as a separate object i'm going to take a primitive which is a uh, pipe so if i take a pipe i just pull this up bring this out and rotate that 90 degrees okay so now uh, i can actually just some parameters here so let's say 10 no i think 12 should be fine 12 or 8 should be fine and then i want to make that uh, height to be less and thickness also to be less something like that looks nice i'm going to choose my front view here okay and i'm going to keep my pivot point right in the center so what i'll do is i'll actually select all these vertices and move the vertices so what happens is the pivot point remains in the same place all right so now we have one side of the eye uh, we need to make a copy to the other side and at the same time we want to have both those eyes uh, to be connected okay so to do that i'm going to actually split this into two and i'll actually move that to the other side okay so i'll use my insert edge loop tool just to add a couple of edge loops here okay and then i'm going to select the face oops okay so delete all these four uh actually eight faces and then i can just select these two guys move them over here okay and move these two guys over here okay so i'll select these two press x to snap it to the grid point press x snap it to the grid point there you go i want to do the same thing here press x snap and keep it over there press x snap and just pull it up okay so now you can just continue on building the shape from here okay that's fine pulls over here I think actually uh, this can be even further up. I'm not following exactly as the uh, image, but I think the top area can be a little bit lifted up compared to the bottom one. There you go. So if you think that you want to have more details, you can actually add a couple of more edge loops as well. So let's say I'll add one here and one here just to get that uh, bend or curved shape more precisely so I can actually push these guys a little bit up this guy this one can be in the same place that's fine so let's go back here and yeah that's exactly the shape that I wanted and now to have the other side we can simply make a mirror so let's go to mesh mirror there you go so if I press 3 you can see that yeah that looks good now, if you don't want to have this rounded shape, you want to have more of a uh, boxy shape, you can actually add either bevel or you can add uh, some extra edge loops as well. So I'm going to use a bevel. So just double click on that top, double click on the bottom, and I'm going to add um, bevel edge. There you go. So let's have less fraction, not too much, 0.2. Maybe just one division, maybe no division is needed. Let's check that out, press three. Yeah, that looks good. Looks very good. Okay, that's exactly what I wanted. So now um, I can simply select that and push it over here. Uh, we have a little bit of arc shape, so I can either just uh, move that, move the vertices, that's one method. Or we can also apply something called a bend modifier okay so i need to go to animation here and there should be deform uh where do we have non-linear yes and then we have bend is bend yes bend okay so now with bend uh what i can do is i can just choose this curvature okay and then that shows us the ax actual axis and we need to basically change this axis just rotate it like so, 90 degrees, there it is, okay? So I think uh, a curvature of 10 should be fine, or 12 should be fine. 
Now, if you want to move it, you actually need to move uh, the bend along with that. I think that's fine. Perfect. Now, once we're happy with the result, we can actually delete the history, which will actually delete the bend deformer as well. That's it. But the bend that we have made remains the same. Good. Now, I can also create a separate object that is going to be inside. Um, I'll go to create and choose a plane. Rotate that 90 degrees. Bring it up, bring it to the front. We don't need all these details here, so let's just make that less. Make that bigger. Again, I need to apply the same bend deformer on this. But that's fine. But keep in mind to have bend deformer, you actually need to have a lot of divisions. So let's just add some divisions here. Okay, so let's apply the same deformer here, nonlinear, bend, same curvature, and we also need to rotate that. Uh, the rotation is different, okay, so let's just rotate this. Yeah, there we go. So that it stays inside, that's fine. I think the amount of bent is good. So what I can do is I can actually um, delete the history, delete my type history. So that gets rid of the bend. And now I can actually do some little uh, tweaking. Okay, so here you can see that these two needs to be pushed down a bit. And these two needs to be pushed up. These two needs to be pushed down as well. Um, these two guys can actually be scaled quite small. Maybe pushed closer to each other. Okay, so make sure that that shape is not going to be visible outside because we will actually have, uh, we will give a different texture to that for the eye. Or we can actually combine that with, along with the same shape as well, because we will actually create something called uh, blend shapes for the eyes and the mouth and stuff. So we need to actually create different shapes. So we need to make sure that when we create the different shapes, these uh, guys stay together as well. Um, I could have actually increased the divisions here, but if needed, we can do that later as well, okay? so. Uh, we can actually just create these two eyebrows just to add it more facial details. Now I'm going to create the eyebrow something similar to the um, what is that? Angry Birds. Okay, so a thick eyebrow, not like what you're seeing here in the image. All right, so let's see. Bring that over here. I also want to add some details here. So let's say just two depth, I don't know. Three should be fine. But width division is what I'm concerned about. So yeah, something like that. So um, let's make it a bit longer. All right. So this can be a bit smaller. These guys needs to be more smaller as well. This can be pushed out, this can be pushed out. There you go. No, it doesn't look nice. Let me try to make it smaller. And I can actually do a little bit of tweaking here. 
no, Angry Birds idea didn't work. So we'll just stick, stick to the same sketch that we have made. Okay, so I think that looks good. All right. So sticking to the plan. Um, I can actually just scale this down like so. Press three and see how that looks. Nice. And finally, I can just move everything in and do a little bit of rotation here just to fix to that shape that we have. There you go. And I want to make a mirror to the other side. So when I make the mirror to the other side, let me go to edit. Um, delete all by type history and I'm also going to freeze the transformation because we have some weird rotations and stuff so let's go to modify and freeze transformation there and I'm going to actually move the pivot point right to the center here all right uh, we don't want to combine them to be a single object or we can or we don't want to because we want to have blend shapes and stuff like that created for that. So what I'll do is I'll actually keep uh, them separate. I'll duplicate special preset. Uh, it can be instance because whatever change we want to do for one side, we want the same change in the other side as well. So I'll just go ahead and make the scale X to be minus one. Minus one. Duplicate special. There you go. Turn it on. Yep. There you go. So we've created the details of the character as well. Okay. So this completes this tutorial, guys. Uh, in the next one, we will uh, start creating the UV layout for the uh, model. And then we will start creating the texture. All right, guys, so that completes this tutorial. If you have any questions, you can write them in the comment section below. And thanks for watching. See you in the next one.